Hello everybody, this is Tim again. I was going to do my Texas Chainsaw Massacre reviews uh, now, but I figured um, I'll save. I mean, I'll wait till later to do those fuckers and just go ahead and do a review for a film that I recently saw that I seen a long time ago when I was a kid. So I figured I'd go ahead and do a review for it first, since I've recently saw it. Uh, sometimes they come back. Uh, it's the name of the film. It's based off a of Stephen King short story. I figured I would do this one next, since it goes along with the last one I did, Graveyard Shift. But anyway, we jump right into this. Uh, I've never really read the short story, but I know what happens in it. Uh, so I'm just going to judge this for the just judge the film by itself. Uh, the film stars Tim Matheson as Jim Norman and uh, Brooke Adams as his wife. Uh, Robert Rustler is in this film from A Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Uh, he plays uh, like a, the leader of the gang of greasers in this film. Um, uh, one of the greasers is uh, the same actor from the movie Demonic Toys. He played like a chicken del food delivery guy on that film. I don't know the actor's name. Uh, but anyway, let's just jump right into the story of this uh, fucker right here and uh, get to it. Basically, the story of this film is kind of about repressed memories and dealing with things dealing with things from the past that you've kind of repressed and not dealt with yet. Um, uh, when Tim Matheson plays the lead, he's a teacher. He kind of had like an anger incident, so he has to relocate to his old hometown uh, where his brother was killed when they were little. Uh, his brother's name was Wayne. He was his older brother when they were little. Um, when the, so when him and his brother were little, they were heading out to the library, I guess. They had to go through the tunnel. This gang of asshole greasers shows up, which is uh, always fun to have asshole greasers in a movie. Uh, the leader of them is Robert Rustler. Um, there's three greasers and the fourth guy. I don't know if he's a greaser or not, but he's with them. Uh, they're pretty much assholes. <laughs> they have to drive a pretty badass car, though, with flames on it. But anyway, they parked the car, uh, the car on the tracks, the train tracks, which kind of... I don't know why, but because uh, fucking train that was gonna come through there sooner or later. I guess they figured they'd be done with this shit soon enough. So they decided to torture these kids just for the hell of it, cause well they're assholes, and that's what assholes do. <laughs> anyway, so they decided to torture the kids. They try to take uh, the older kid Wayne's money, uh, Jimmy, or whatever. He just stands there like a little bitch, doesn't do anything really. To try to help his brother. <laughs> His brother punches Robert Russell in the face. Uh, Robert Russell says, nobody hits me. He doesn't like to be hit, obviously. He jerks out his knife, and I guess he's just going to fuck with the kid and maybe cut him uh, a little bit, but he ends up stabbing him on an accident, so then they, I guess they get ready to kill the other boy, too, the younger one, Wayne. Uh, but then the fucking train shows up. They jump in their vehicle trying to start it off, but they don't want to can't find their keys. Um, the other character, Mueller, who's with him, who I don't think is a grocery, but is just hanging out with him. He climbs out the window, gets the fuck out of Dodge for the train hits like the other one should have done. <laughs> but they're, they're greasers, so they're partially handicapped, I guess. But <laughs> fucking train comes through, plows their asses down, the car explodes, and rather neat explosion. For I heard this is a TV film. For a TV film, it has okay effects. Uh, the fucking vehicle gets blown away by the train and bursts to flames. Uh, there's some... Shitty, little shitty acting in this from the children uh, in the flashbacks when they got to show emotion, particularly from the kid who plays the young Tim Matheson or whatever. Uh, Jimmy, I mean, young Jimmy, he runs back crying. It sounds, sounds really sappy and definitely feels like it's made for TV with his acting. But anyway, so this cop finds him. Uh, then we basically, uh, he tells a story to the cop or whatever, I guess, off screen back in the when this incident happened. Let's get back to the future. Uh, Tim Matheson's the teacher. He's teaching up a storm uh, in his new, uh, new, new, new school. He fucking, uh, the jocks there are all assholes, just like typical jocks are. Uh, some guy named Chip, or the Chipster, whichever one you want to call him. <laughs> or Fuckface, like I prefer. So Fuckface gives Tim Matheson a hard time in class because he thinks he's just letting him go through class. Easy, breezy, lemon squeezy. Because he's a jock. Tim Matheson gets tired of them bullshit and he fucking breaks a stick on the table, which uh, one of the students claims that he likes, and I don't blame him because I got like two, he should probably should have broken over Chip's head, but anyway. <laughs> so, uh, the jocks stir up trouble for him by telling the principal there that he's on them too hard because they want to just fucking snoozy on through school year so they can play uh, football for eternity, I guess that's what they want to do. <laughs> Or till their school years up. Probably eternity too. I'd say if a jock could play football or whatever sport they like for eternity, they'd probably enjoy it. But anyway. So uh, Tim Matheson is out. He's getting ready to hit the road, get the fuck out of Dodge, go home. 
Uh, the student who he likes in his class shows up, talks to him for a little bit. Uh, he hits the road. He drops his wallet. We, well, we get kind of some foreshadowing about dealing with the past and shit like that from the student because he says he's been thinking about the past and how it repeats itself and all that blah, 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 horse shit. <laughs> well, it's not horse shit, but it seems it's obviously foreshadowing events to come with Tim Matheson's character having to deal with the past. So it's a little, a little in the audience's face there, but anyway. So he leaves, but he drops his wallet. Tim Matson's got it. He wants to go give the, the kid back his wallet. He takes off after him, uh, but the Greasers are chasing after him, so uh, they have to kill uh, a person so each one of them can come back in their place. A life for a life, I guess, which is fine, but I'm not really sure how they're already there to kill him in, the, in their invisible car when they gotta come back one at a time because they're obviously all three in the vehicle because you can see them, but what the fuck ever. <laughs> it didn't bother me too much. Uh, Tim Matheson is driving behind. They can only see a Tim Matheson's vehicle uh, because the creature's vehicle is invisible. Uh, Tim Matheson is the only one that can see it. They run the kid off the road uh, over like the fucking side of the hill. It's not a very graphic death, but the aftermath when you see his corpse down there and twisted up, it's kind of, it's pretty cool. Ugh, it's good. That's a decent death. Um, later on after that, um, Tim Matson is like everybody. The principal at the school is like giving him shit, tripping out because he says the only car everybody saw was your fucking car, so it had to be you. <laughs> and uh, so basically, he's in his class, and then this student shows up. Robert Rushler shows up, who is a transfer from Milford, <laughs> which is actually a fucking cemetery. But he shows up. Robert Russell's there, and of course Tim Matson notices he looks just like the dick from his past, and well, he's still a dick now in the future. And he's like giving Tim Matson shit and asking why he keeps staring at him, which is kind of funny. I like Robert Russell, actually. I like what the act that actor. He does fine in this film. Um, he carries like his his greaser persona and his dick persona, dickhead persona pretty well. So Tim Matson, um, just so well, this other girl in class who likes him, who likes Tim Matson, this student that he likes to. Uh, she says, don't pay attention to the, the idiots in class. So I kind of pissed off Robert Russell, and he's like, you next, <laughs> obviously. So later on that night, um, um, Tim Matson has like another dream or whatever. Repressed memories coming back to haunt him. Oh, and the whole thing about him being like an angry teacher, having some kind of incident, I believe, is like also took from the Shining book. So it's weird that they took like from two Stephen King stories, but whatever. It doesn't really bother me. <coughs> Anyway, in the film, so he has like another episode. Uh, this film is good. The flashbacks with them being kids and stuff, uh, establishing their bond is a little sappy, but kind of like them in church or and stuff like that. But it's a little sappy, but not too bad. Uh, you do hear the line "Run, Jimmy, run!" too many fucking times. It kind of made me sick after hearing it so long. <laughs> but it's not bad. Uh, so then he decides to take a trip uh, outside to go walk around. I guess road walking, just to reminisce. He runs into the girl from his class that he likes, or, well, not like most of fuck, but just likes, you know, thinks she's a good student. And uh, obviously the police are driving by at the exact same time, that's pretty big cliche, and sets it up, obviously, that the people in the town are going to think he has something to do with this shit. <laughs> so, uh, he leaves, heads back home, and then he has a nightmare about her being killed, and his fucking weird flashes keep, like, just, like, bop, 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 bop in your face like that, and it's kind of annoying. You don't see her get killed, but you know the, she's fucking dead. <laughs> but those, like, white flashes annoyed the shit out of me, and then he wakes up from the nightmare, and he he's still, like, he can hear the greasers laughing nonstop. They laugh, like, over and over in this fucking movie. It's kind of funny at first, but it does grate a little bit on the nerves after a while, but they're entertaining. And all the greasers, they all do fine. The sidekick greaser to Robert Russell's character, who's like a blonde-haired guy, uh, he's fine. I don't know the actor's name, but he's probably the creepiest of the three, but he does fine. So, um... Uh, later on after that, Tim Matson goes out because he's wanting to find, uh, well, he leads, like, the people in the town on a search for her body because he knows she's dead. So they find her in the barn hung, which I thought was actually pretty cool. They actually hung her. That's, that's pretty neat death, even though you don't get to see it happen, but it's still pretty cool. Um, so pretty much after that, uh, Tim Matson goes back to school. Presto, new student is the other greaser, the one with the blonde hair, short blonde hair. Um, uh, he's there. Uh, he talks, he jerks out the switchblade knife that Robert Russell used to kill his, uh, brother with, Tim Matson's brother when they were younger. Uh, <laughs> Tim Matson takes the knife, they fuck with Tim Matson through the entire film when he's at school, it's pretty funny shit. Uh, later on, uh, 
Tim Matson's at home, and then Chip, the amazing jock asshole, shows up and talks about how he hung out with the the, the greasers or whatever, and <laughs> how they talk about how they wanted to kill Tim Matson, basically fuck him up. And, uh, he says he doesn't want no part of it. Tim Matson walks outside, and the, the jock delivers my. Well, Tim Matson tries to get him to help him to go to the police, and the jock delivers the greatest line ever. I'm just a jock. I can't deal with this, sir. Basically, that's basically what he says. Was, it comes off pretty fucking stupid. But anyway, and then one of the scenes I actually really like comes up where they fucking just like run the jock over. He's like on the hood, and they take off with him. And the police show up, and they don't pay any attention to whatever the fuck Tim Matson's saying. Just take him here for questioning and holding. Because they blame him for the murders, basically. Because police are dumbasses in horror films. <laughs> so, uh, they got Chip on the hood, and they stop. And they, uh, they drag him into the vehicle. Uh, and then they just fuck with him for <laughs> 30 or 40 minutes. They stop on a bridge. And this is probably the best scene in the movie, but also kind of the worst. But it's, I would say it's it's the best, like, makeup-wise. Because there's some good makeup effects here. Uh, this is probably one of the, this is probably the scariest scene in the film. Uh... They talk about how they want to scare him, and the other uh, greasers there, the third one, the final member of this gang, <laughs> the guy who plays in the chicken driver in Demont and Toys, I don't know his name, uh, but anyway, he's there, and they're fucking with Chip, and uh, they talk about how they want to show him the face, and they're like, oh man, that's for kids, but the way they threw the three of them played up is pretty funny, and then they show him like their corpse face, like their dead face, and their like, fucking skeletons and shit, and the makeup effects is pretty good, and I really love this scene, Robert Russell didn't turn around and say, time to rock, jock, when he jerks that switchblade, which is the cheesiest fucking shit I've ever heard, <laughs> not even worthy of like a bad Freddy Krueger pun, but anyway, so then they get, it gets real silly, and they chop him, like his whole body up, head and all, with this little switchblade, and I'm like, oh, what the fuck, but anyway, that's just too silly for me, okay, and then after that, basically the next day, uh, Tim Matson goes back to school. Uh, he sees all three of them hanging out in the bathroom. They tell him that the anniversary of the event when they die is coming up. Uh, basically, they've come back to uh, Tim Matson finds out from this uh, the cop who uh, he ran to when he was a kid that basically when the spirits of people who die they feel like uh, they have unfinished business or whatever they hold out and they sometimes they come back basically to finish shit they that they started long ago. And the, the cop is kind of like in a rest home and he has like psychic visions because he got shot in the head or whatever. And it's kind of like he's pretty much just plot service. He's just there. But anyway, so that's basically what they want to do. Recreate it because they feel like they died unjustly, I guess. Um, even though they're fucking assholes, but still. Um, so he finds them in the, the he finds them in the bathroom. Uh, they fuck around with him a little bit. He gets mad and puts Robert Russell up against the wall. The principal walks by. Heck, like the teacher is assaulting him, and he stops, and they walk away. In retaliation for him knocking Robert Russell over against the wall, they fucking fuck with his kid and try to run him down. And I, I really enjoyed the scene. They're like trying to plow his ass down. And he takes off running, jumps in another car, and they hit it, fucking knock it over. Pretty entertaining scene. Um, I mean, it's nothing like Fast and Furious or anything, but it's pretty good. So basically, after that, um, uh, Tim Matson remembers that uh, one of the Members of the Greaser Gang got away. It's a guy named Mueller. Character. His name's Mueller. I don't know the actual actor's name. I think it might be William Sanderson, but I'm not sure. Uh, so he goes off to find him. Uh, to, so he goes off and finds Mueller uh, before the Greasers do. He's trying to find him before the Greasers do. He finds Mueller. Uh, Mueller runs off like a little bitch. Just hits the road. <laughs> so he, uh, his family is attacked that night by the Greasers. They're just fucking with him. <laughs> a little some more. Uh, Tim Matson goes back uh, home, uh, shoots uh, Robert Russell a couple times in the chest. Robert Russell survives, of course, because he's already fucking dead, so it don't make a difference how many times he gets shot. <laughs> and you get kind of funny lines here where they're, where they're like, "We just wanted to make sure you's coming." <laughs> uh, those shit like that is always humorous. Uh, the greasers they deliver their lines. The actors who play them are all fine. They're funnier and shit. Uh, they're probably one of the highlights of the film, really, except for the constant laughing that they do oh, do too much. <coughs> Sorry, coughing problems. But anyway, so basically after that, he decides to go find new, uh, he decides to go reminisce at his old house, uh, and he's got the keys of the, that they had. He still has got the fucking keys that they had in their vehicle that he took when they were little. I mean, when he, yeah, when he was little. That's why they couldn't get off the train tracks because their keys were missing and that caused them to get killed. So they feel like they died unjustly, I guess, because of that. Um, 
So he's got the keys. Mueller shows back up and he says he always knew they would come back. And I'm like, what the fuck? How the fuck could you possibly think that? But anyway, or know that. <laughs> they walk back outside. Uh, the asshole greasers are out there. They blow up uh, fucking Tim Madison's vehicle in a pretty decent scene. It just blows up. So it was entertaining. Explosions are always entertaining. Um, so basically after that, they kick Tim Madison's ass. He's a pretty big pussy in this movie. He gets to out pretty easy. <laughs> Every time he runs into him, they take Mueller. Uh, Tim Matson takes his family to the church because he plans on facing down the greasers. Uh, this is a pretty funny. This is a pretty. I like this scene. They're at the church. The greasers show up. Um, the uh, the kid, the Tim Matson's son in the film. Yeah, his kid in the film is like real stupid. Just runs to the door. Every time somebody shows up, thinking it's his dad, and he opens the door. One of the, the greasers are like. Uh, the, the stupidest member of the greasers, the one from Demonic Toys, is, is like, let's go in. And they're like, well, you go ahead, buddy. And he walks in, his fucking foot catches fire. It's pretty funny. <laughs> and they're outside, like, messing around. And Rob Russell does, like, a backflip off side of the church, which is pretty funny. <laughs> and so uh, later on after that, the kid hears, like, his dad's voice. He runs to the door like another, like a dumb bastard. I'm starting to hate this kid by this point in the movie. He goes out there and they take him. So, of course, they Brooke Adams, the wife, they get her because she wants to help the kid. They take him hostage, take him to the old uh, uh, fucking train tracks where they died at back in the day when this whole shitstorm started, occurred, or whatever. Uh, Tim Matson shows up there and he's been like uh, begging for his brother. He went to his brother's gravesite right before that, begging for him to come back and help him. So. <coughs> fucking coughing again. <laughs> this movie makes me cough a lot. He's begging for his brother to come back, so of course his brother does. So now he's at the train tracks or whatever, and uh, he's there, and they're wanting to recreate the accident, uh, recreate the fucking incident. Uh, his brother shows up. Well, they they kill Mueller first because he gets in the way. Uh, so they kill Mueller, and he somehow knows that every time they kill somebody, uh, another person gets to come through. Even though I thought the brother shows back up, Wayne. Uh, uh, even though I thought he had already came through, but what the fuck ever, he's there. Uh, he's there, and they recreate the same exact incident. Um, here, I think you might hear "Run Jimmy Run" again. I'm not for sure. I, I hope not. I might just blank it out. But anyway, so they create the recreate the same exact incident, except uh, the train actually shows up too. So it's kind of like history repeating itself. So I guess it's like a ghost train, which it's kind of neat, I guess. But uh, but yeah. It, the train shows back up and it's going to run the vehicle over. Uh, Tim Matson finally shows some balls and knocks Robert Russell down or whatever. Uh, so uh, Robert Russell gets the keys this time. They actually get the keys and he managed to get in the vehicle right before Tim Matson. Well, Tim Matson right before that rescues his, his wife and kid and gets him out of the vehicle. They get in the vehicle and this time even with the keys, they still can't start it. <laughs> so either way, they were meant to die. So they're fucked three ways from Sunday, six ways from Sunday either way. The train shows up, pl plows them down again. This time it's pretty cool though. You get to see them in like their corpse makeup that they had in the, the vehicle scene with the dumbass jock earlier. And they just get obliterated and explode again. So that's pretty neat seeing that. Um, the ghost of his brother is there. You get some, some sappy sappy shit, a little bit too sappy. Where he's talking about like how uh, he wants to be with his brother and wants his brother to come with him. It's pretty sweet though. I enjoyed it. Uh, and then his brother, he tells him, of course, he's got to stay for his family. His brother understands, and he leaves and goes back to the afterlife. And uh, basically, after that, that's uh, cue into movie. Uh, this movie, I would give it a solid two stars out of a possible four. It's a it's a decent movie. Um, I do like it. <coughs> Fucking coughing again. I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to watch this movie again. But anyway. Yeah, it's a decent movie. I do like it. Uh, for, a t for a television film, it's good. The acting is above average, I think. Especially for a television film from the early 90s. Tim Matson does fine. Um, Brooke Adams, she does okay as the wife. She's just the wife, basically. <laughs> the the Greasers and Tim Matson. The, well, the Greasers are the highlight of the film. Robert Russell, he's fun. The blonde-haired Greaser is sidekick, basically. He's, he's fun. And the other guy from Demonic Toys, he's entertaining. So the Greasers all together, separately, they'd probably be annoying as fuck, but together they're entertaining as hell. The film has a really sappy feel to it, of course, but I like the score to it. It's kind of like piano keys, but with like a sweet, sad sound to it. So I really enjoyed that. I do like this movie, and I do think it's a fuckload better than Graveyard Shift. <laughs> At the very least, it's a fuckload better than Graveyard Shift. And I'd say if you're a Stephen King fan, or if you like the short story, I'd say check it out ends differently than the short story and has kind of a different meaning to it. 
but uh, a little bit of a different well, meaning to it. It's an entertaining film, and I do like it, and I say definitely check it out if you're a Stephen King fan. I'll see you guys again for finally the Texas Chainsaw Massacre reviews.